that's what everybody's here for, right? Transmits 
pressure on the page, and that pressure causes the material to adhere to the paper creating a mark. That mark, a series of marks, will then create the illustration. Right? So think about it like it's pixels, but in real life. Got it? I want to make sure everyone is on the same train. Woo! <laughs> All right, so uh, this is a side shot because these are super easy. Uh, I drop one on my app on them. Right, so let's start with that. Oh, we can't. It's hard to see, right? Okay. So we we'll come clear. So uh, this this really is about proportions, and I find that if I draw straight to ink, sometimes people feel super intimidated, but I can't do that. So I do this for your It's called underdrawing. It's, uh, it's really just to, like it's like a blueprint or a safety net. Right, that exists under your real drawing, and this allows you to, um, you know, um, kind of block your spaces out. Right, um, it's like creating a schedule for your day, so you know, you know, double book things. Right, so I'm gonna I, quite a horrible analogy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna think about this one. That's gonna sound rusty. Uh, it is blueprint. Blueprint is the closest thing. Like it is a general plan. Right, so like the forehead is here, the nose is here. That way I'll get something that looks really oddly out of proportion. And then also I don't want the tip of this generic Norse helmet to uh, <laughs> hit the top of paper because that would create a weird bad tangent. So I have to have like an inch there, or three quarters of an inch there, right? So you can see that, right? And then what we can even do is we can block in our shadows. We can, we can pull this out even longer so we can put the side of this a piece of lead, graphite, and you can just use this and just sort of quickly block in some shadows, all right? All right. All right, now I'm going to transfer to an ink instrument, an inking instrument. Um, I thought I had an ink, but it must be a different bit. Oh, here's an ink. So this is the second to largest micron marker you can get, so I don't mind telling it as a 0.12 or 0.2. I've never seen one, but people on the internet love being right. <laughs> <laughs> so who am I to tell them that they're wrong? Uh, anyway, that's, that's just been my personal experience. Um, so I'm going to start with the eyes. I always start with the eyes. They say the, wind, uh, the eyes are the windows to the soul or something like that. So, uh, yeah. 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 Accurate yeah. experience? Yeah. Accurate. Um, and uh, so, blonde eye, uh, whatever, blonde uh, with the eyebrow, you know, that's right. <laughs> um, so, he's looking at us. Got it? Do you think about the skeleton underneath blonde eye? Hell no. <laughs> that would be a lot of work. Uh, skeleton of the eyeball. The eyeball, unfortunately, does not have any bones in it. I'm pretty sure. So it's a gelatinous mass. Uh, I do think about bone structure, and you, sir, have some very nice symmetrical bone structure. <laughs> um, so I do recognize that when I see people. Uh, you do think about bones only from the standpoint of mostly like shading, and I'll get to that in a second, right? So very quickly, I drew the eye, and then I put this, and that is like the uh, the eyeball sack. Maybe the better word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Uh, uh, what? Uh, what? Tear duct. Yeah. Tear duct. Mm. No, it's, it's more of a sack. Uh, <laughs> the tear duct is inside the sack. Huh? And when I'm excited, you tear up, right? <coughs> so, yes. What? Yeah, yeah, so, so, but it's also the piece of material that keeps your eyeball in your head. So if you were to cut this out, your eyeball might actually roll out. Might, I don't know. <laughs> don't, do not test this theory out. <laughs> I know some of you are impressionable, you're like, all right, whatever Jim says, I'm in, like, no, all right. And then this here is the, uh, if you feel like right here, you guys feel like, you, you feel bone, right, sir? Right? Um, and then it's soft and fleshy, but the bone, so this line represents the edge of that bone. Orbital. The orbital, that's right, the suborbital, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, okay. Are you a doctor? No. <laughs> 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 
How do you know this? Useless knowledge. Okay. <laughs> I smacked the heck out of his subalter bull <laughs> And then this, it represents uh, a wrinkle. That's one wrinkle, there's another, right? Got it? All right, so that's an eye. And then this is the eyebrow. And uh, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's very thick. It's very Norse-like, right? And then I will uh, go and do the furrow of the brow and then the uh, underside of the brow, like that. And, and this line is a little thicker because uh, the light source is generally above us on this planet. And uh, so the, the, everything underneath is in shadow and everything as you go up starts. So as we go up on this helmet, maybe I don't even draw the top because the light is bouncing off that generic silver and mm -hmm. bouncing off hard, right? So, if the mind fills in it, right? Yeah, yeah. it's an optical illusion. <laughs> I'm not trying to cheat you out of your drawing experience. It's intentional. Uh, and then the nose, does he have a bad nose or is it a straight nose? What do you guys think? Uh, I don't know, it might, might have been in battle, so it might be a little bent. A little bent? He's so bent. Roman nose, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. You know all the terminology. Right? <laughs> Does anyone know what Roman nose is? I've heard it yes, before. Yes, right. Yeah, well, it's more pronounced. It's, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. All right. Wrong, wrong kind of guy. Now we go underneath, uh, we're going to draw one nostril. And uh, I don't know what that looks like. Mm. I always try to, like, Break it down so you, you say so sometimes people, when I can't draw a nose, nostril, it's too complicated. So I try to, it's a sideways looking six, right? Maybe? I don't know. A comma? A very stretched out comma? It's a key. With an arm. <laughs> Think of that. It's a key with an arm. Much easier to draw than nostrils, trust me. Right. It's a quarter note. It's a what? Quarter note? I don't even know what that is. Is that a terminology? What is Musical. <laughs> Music. Give me two of those quarter notes. <laughs> All right. Uh, upper lip. He's, he's got this, a little swanky look expression on his face, right? And then a little bit of lower lip sticking out, and then he's got the prodigious, prodigious chin. Okay, there you go. All right. Then I'm done. That's it. <laughs> Line, what? <laughs> All right. Light. 
He doesn't wear the helmet a lot in the movie. No, that's, yeah, that's why people don't know. Cool. It's been a long time since I've, I just draw it out there. I don't think about where it attaches.
subjective, so. Yeah, oh my god, completely. Because I would draw something and I'd be like, wow, that, I think that really turned out great. The negative space, the shadowing, the lighting, the forms, all these things that artists care about. And fans are like, eh. And I'm like, all right, I hate you. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, and then you draw something like, oh, here's like, like 12,000 Batman head, like, oh my god, Batman is so great. Go, go, go. You know, and, and so I know that it plays a role because I've seen it. Is, is it true that your, your Batman, that iconic him on the gargoyle, was that a rejected commission? Um, I <laughs> Reject it sounds very really harsh. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm saying it's harsh on the person who rejected it. Uh, it was rejected, yeah. So the second printing the X Men. Or, <laughs> Batman 608. Let's start over. Uh, <laughs> so Batman 608, first issue of Batman Hush, the cover where he's swinging with his foot towards you was just a pinup. Yeah. I just did in 2001, and I changed the date to 2003. <laughs> <laughs> Because I didn't want to make profiles using old art. Uh, I can say this now because you guys have already bought copies. At least. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Return them? Like, uh, but I did move things around a little bit, so theoretically it was a slightly. <laughs> <laughs> you were giving a Twitter fan face. <laughs> yeah, I <didn't> agree. <laughs> and, then the, and then it sold so well, they needed the second printing cover and they needed a, a, a Pronto. And uh, I did have that piece, and it was a commissioned piece of art. Someone wanted Batman art, but they didn't like it. And uh, I think my agent, my art agent, bought it instead. Hmm. I think that's the story. Is that right, Eddie? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Honestly, he knows more than I do. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so that's what happened. So if you. So the moral of the story is don't ever sell anything or reject it yeah. because you don't know. I might use it as a second cover. But then that and the Superman just complement each other so well. Yeah, I really honestly didn't think too much of that. Like a side shot of a guy standing on a gargoyle, like, you know, like you guys, the fans, you guys liked it. And so then I'm like, all right, I should do one for Superman. Those two images that become um, kind of iconic representations of my take on Superman and Batman. But it was never intended that way. It was really like, here you go, I gotta give you a quick commission. No, uh, it was not, like, it was, uh, put a lot of effort into that and you rejected it. And so it does happen. You have to be, you have to have a thick skin in comics, or art, you know? Because the art really rejected you, not the artwork. That's a joke. All right, in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Push it, Yes. What's the most valuable and meaningful piece Ooh, uh, I don't know, that's a good question. Um, that I own, I, I don't own a lot of my own work, uh, but what do you Well, I, I, yeah, I have an answer. So sometimes I draw something, and uh, I, I sell a lot of my original art, right? And, and uh, sometimes my wife sees the drawing and goes, oh, I like that. And I go, oh, cool. I like it. I want to keep it. And so, <laughs> so a lot of the art we own now is because she has pulled the art from me, <laughs> and she has on her own art collection of Jim Lee originals. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Do you collect art from other artists. Uh, I used to, and not so much anymore. I had a joke, but I'm not going to go So. Uh, Mm. I, I used to buy a lot of art when I would go to conventions. Um, Jack Kirby art, Frank Miller art, John Byrne, all the stuff that I loved as a kid growing up. I, Michael Golden, that G.I. Joe annual issue, I bought that whole issue. I had a whole Jack Kirby Fantastic Four issue. Um, the double paste spread with all the X Men uh, when they come up, like, onto the Shi'ar planet. Right, right after X-Men 137, that double case spread, I owned that for a brief moment. Uh, the one I really prize today is uh, a double case spread from X-Men 100 by Dave Cockrum. It's all the old X-Men fighting the new X-Men, pages two and three. So I own that original, so I'm one board. 
and Dave Cockrell was a guy that was kind of underrated, fantastic artist, really, you know, before John Byrne came, uh, you know, on, on board, he was like the, the, the excellent artist for me. And uh, so I still own that piece of art. On my homework, uh, I've got like the page of Batman strangling Joker. From, from, no, no, from Hush. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I have pages from there, like different uh, pages of backgrounds with graffiti. Um, just, I don't know. The stuff I have is just kind of random at this point. Um, yeah. Who are your biggest influences coming up? Uh, pretty much what I said. Like, so George Perez, John Byrne, Frank Miller were probably the big three, and then later the Dave, well, also Dave Cockrum, so it was four, the L and was five. And there was all that. Everyone. Like, <laughs> everyone, of course. Uh, but even the artists I didn't particularly care for, like, and, and so those guys, I didn't really, uh, I still learned from them because I would look at their art and try to figure out well, why, why don't I like this art? Well, it's because they're drawing the same mouth on every single figure, or they're drawing the same background, or they're not drawing backgrounds, right? So I started thinking about that and I incorporated all that into my own thinking, right? Or whatever style I was going to approach, like, hey, I gotta make sure I do this because this is what my favorite artists do, and I want to avoid doing this because these are what my least favorite artists do or don't do. So I don't have any Kleenex or anything like that. I do. You do? I do. Is it fresh? Is it new? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure. Okay. Awesome. And we have an hour, right? Uh, 50 minutes, yeah, because I have to talk. Oh, all right. Oh, my God, this is what like, has been your favorite like, project like, or like, characters that you just like, well, like meaningful to you or um, like a, a character that just just brings you joy to draw? Or Oh, do I have that? characters like that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I feel like you're questioning. <laughs> Is there joy in your heart? <laughs> there has to be. Or a project that was meaningful, like personally, more than, you know, like you felt like that was. Well, I, I have an answer for the first question, which is um, are there characters that, I, that bring you joy drawing? Yes, 100% yes. But then if I draw that character 50 times in a row, no, <laughs> the answer is variable. And what I really have uh, found that I enjoy is um, is the interplay, the juxtaposition even, <laughs> of, of, of different types of diverse characters, right? So Wolverine and Jubilee, a Batman and Robin, a Batman and Catwoman, right? Different silhouettes, different gestures, different ways they fight express themselves um, and personalities, right? And so, so that's a big part of it for me. Um, and also stories versus images. So as much as I do covers, and they're a challenge because you're, you're trying to encapsulate a, a, a story idea or entice someone to pick up a comic book based on a single image, um, and you want to make sure you represent the characters correctly and do all the proper Rendering, shadowing, composition, and negative space, all that stuff. Uh, it's still a single static image. I love telling stories with pictures, and you get a different emotional level on top of the joy of seeing the art that will resonate with people for their, for their entire lives, right? And, and to me, that's even more powerful, right? There's a single image, and then the story that comes with these sort of series of images. And so many of you guys have come up and said, like, Thank you for this for my childhood, or you know, um, helping me through, be through my childhood. And so I know that these stories can be very powerful. Um, single images can be memorable, but but really, it's the story. But because you get immersed in these, the world becomes believable. You get sucked into this reality. You believe people can fly and shoot beams out of their eyes and all that stuff. And, and um, being able to bring that to life, I feel like, is, is something that only comic book artists can do. Used to do, but now, you know, TikTok can look pretty easy. Now. <laughs> it's like, how did they change their clothes so fast? That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> yes. Have you tried painting before? 
Uh, yes, I have. Um, but uh, a few things that look like superhero stuff, but a lot of it is um, like personal, like a, a paint my family members or something like that. It's a different kind of thing. You're not drawing lines, you're drawing, um, you're using color to separate shapes, whereas in, in illustration, you draw a line and that clearly separates one thing from another. With paint, you, you got to put color next to another color and then there, you got to think about it. Color spectrum and all that other kind of stuff, which is a lot of fun. I find it very liberating and fun to do. I just have not thought about it um, really much in terms of the work I do uh, for comic books per se. But I do have this dream in mind someday that I will do uh, like a gallery opening of just like paintings um, and uh, uh, those kind of paintings, really large paintings, would be. Um, you sir. With, with that theme, are you working on other compositional programs where you're doing landscapes or still like that? I, I'm not great with landscapes per se. I've done a couple, like, um, you know, of places that we visited or lived in and stuff like that, but they're not, they're not good. They're very, they're not, I'm just telling you that. They're not good. I mean, they're, they're very derivative and, and you know, I, I have not put in the 10,000 hours that I have for drawing, you know, also not men. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that I can do. But drawing a tree and some flowers and sunlight coming through, it's like, like where's the curvy crackle? Where's the, <laughs> you know, how do I draw these flowers bursting apart into a thousand petals? You can't. You gotta make them look all cute and clean. I don't know. It's, can't cross that? Can't cross that for the heck out of it. That is true. So, Although I do cross that to pretty good lemon now. <laughs> 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 pretty good lemon. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm gonna, I think I'm done with this one. Generic filter. That is awesome. Oh, yeah. 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 Super cool. Thank you. I, I didn't know if, if, you, know. if you were pleased, you all. Please, <laughs> you Wait, was that when they got in the circus? I mean, that's comical fans. I just want to <laughs> I'm like locking these up. This is one of the most successful commercial stories of all time. Wait, no one did, did they get hypnotized in the circus by Mesmero? Or was that earlier? That was before. It yeah. was a film issue. Yeah. Did they go to Murder World right after that? Yeah, Murder World. Yeah. From, from Savage Land? Yeah. Was, it was like a, they made a right turn on that interstate in the Savage Land and ended up in the Murder World. I don't know. How did they end up there? I don't know. I have to reread that. It's been a while. Because that was so meaningful. Like, blurred it to my, my memory. Apparently not. Um, uh, the Three Fish, Zero Groove Three Fish story is pretty good. I don't know if that's the exact title. Obviously, Batman Ninja One, and then The Dark Knight Return, of course, right? Mm -hmm. Daredevil, uh, Born Again. Wow. Amazing. Um, Watchmen, of course. Howard Chapin's uh, The Shadow, uh, 
DC Magazine five. That, that's a pretty good series. I think four or six parts. It's been a while. Anyway, so let's give this away, and then I, and then I might have time to do one more quick one. So uh, I ask people. I try to figure out a, a random way to give away art, and, and how many of you guys know what I've asked for before, just out of curiosity? Okay, so you guys have your toe nail clippers? <laughs> you got your magic mic ticket? Yeah, one time I said, like, who's got a receipt for magic mic? Because I, I had just come out. What? Oh, you got tissues, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, so if you ask for tissues, she would now not win. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to ask for, uh, and Dallas asked for condiments. I'm going to ask for a specific type of condiment. A pack of relish. Because I like, I like a good relish on a hot dog. Anyone hold have it, relish? Hold it up if you have it. <laughs> All right, so, okay. You know, let's go. Since this is a July 4th. No, no. Uh, <laughs> that, sir, would be called cheating. <laughs> Since it's 4th of July weekend, you guys all know the things that were created in America, things like? Why? Apple pie, is that what we said? Yeah. <laughs> no. Apple pie, Ford, I don't no, know. No, I think apple pie came from Germany. Well, it's uh, sure. American is apple pie. Hamburger? No, hamburger literally named after a city called Hamburg, Germany. Hamburg, uh, Frankfurt. Now, uh, Blue jeans. Blue jeans. Baseball. There we go, baseball. One. Basketball. Ice cream. Basketball. Was it ice cream created? Yeah. I saw Wonder Woman. There was ice cream clearly in Victorian age. Well, no, no, no. no. Uh, I'm pretty sure ice cream predated America. Uh, baseball, jazz. Basketball. No, no, not basketball. No, no James that. Naismith in Kansas. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think so. Wonder Woman has an idea. Comic books. Yes. Wonder Woman. Congratulations. No, that's amazing. No. Yeah, no, no. I, 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 uh, well, maybe it will still win. Okay, here we go. So, no, I, I, I have this theme, all right? So, um, uh, jazz, all right? So, does, it, does anyone have. I don't know what. I don't know what I'm going with this. A what? A drum kit? A drum kit. Does anyone have a saxophone? <laughs> Oh, uh, everyone will have to play. Um, right, let's, and everyone has something with, with uh, comps. So, with a saxophone on it. what? I have a pen with a saxophone. You have a pen with a saxophone? I, 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 will, I, I, I will accept that. I think, yes. I think they accept that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Golden Age. I really like the 
Oh, thank you, thank you. I knew that there's always one in every crowd. <laughs> so I like to hear. Lee Kirby comic yeah. would have to be the next one. Yeah. Excuse me? Any particular issue that you like? Uh, issue 10? Nice. Savage one? You know, Chase Stone was in here. Yeah, pretty good issue. Um, another really great one, the Neil Adams, Roy Thomas, running on towards the end, right before it got canceled. Like, oh my god, those were life changing for me. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm going to draw Wonder Woman. It's essentially Thor. But with dark hair. <laughs> Start with the eyes, same on the ground. A little different nose, though. Uh, yes, less of a Roman nose and more of a Hellenistic nose. Mm -hmm. Save the trade. Um, yes. What X Men character did you not wait to draw when you first started? Ooh. Uh, good question. <laughs> Probably Wolverine, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, I was a big Wolverine fan. I mean, who wasn't? Back then, we didn't have Netflix. We didn't have, we had three channels. Yeah. Maybe four we count PBS. So everyone read and saw the same stuff. Everyone read and or listened. Like, everyone liked everything together. It was very homogenous, very boring. And now, like, none of us like the same things. And the world's a mess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> simple times. When you're working, do you have a, a typical routine? <laughs> when I'm working, I feel like a passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> no. like so many pages a day? Or... <laughs> do I have a goal? How many pages? What? How many pages a day? A day? <laughs> You obviously don't watch my streams. Uh, <laughs> if I can get a page done a day, I am like, shh, kill it. It's, it's, yeah, it's hard. Drawing like this is easy, easier. Um, same on screen. Uh, when I was just drawing comics for that, what, 1992 to 93? Uh, one page a day would have been fantastic. Uh, and, and that's because if you watch me stream, I, I stream an actual page on the Superman story. Uh, so it's like a six hour stream. You saw me take the page from nothing to, to finish. And I think it finished like four or five o'clock in the morning. It just, uh, there's a lot of erasing, a lot of fine tuning, like, so just moving things, which I just don't do when I sketch like this. So, and I don't know what the problem is, I should probably just draw like this, but um, when I draw for real, um, professionally, there's a lot more racing than drawing than for real. It's, it's a little weird, I, I, I can't really explain why. Maybe because I feel like it has to be more perfect, even though, of course, there's no, there's no such thing as perfection, right? So, but I will draw whole figures and then erase them and move them slightly over I think they look better, whereas I, I just won't do that. I'm just sketching for fun or for demonstration. So I have a question. Yes. Um, you know, as an artist, we get inspiration in general everywhere. Correct. I wonder if you got inspiration from the general public and you use features in your artwork. Features? Like you mean like from people's faces yes. that I, yeah. I see? Uh, not direct inspiration, but when I used to sketch more like in sketchbooks and stuff, I would draw people at the airport. I would be traveling a lot, and I would draw like them, like their gesture, right? So, you know, um, and it's good for like, it's good for like capturing wrinkles and. Right? It has nothing to do with superhero art. Yeah. And uh, so, it's not just inspiration, but it's actually kind of learning through what you see in real life, right? Yes. 
Uh, yeah. But sometimes you see people and be like, wow, if I drew that person, people would think uh, I was making things up. Yeah, sometimes people have unusual bone compositions, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So, If you could have lunch with any superhero, who would you have lunch with? <laughs> uh, Matt or Eagerline, I think that would be kind of fun to watch. <laughs> What, me? Wait, you've worked with DC and Harper, but which do you prefer? Mm. <laughs> Thank you. 